Hey everyone, Michelle from edutainingkid.com here with my favorite sidekick, Little Man. Today we're at the Smithsonian National Zoo to bring you one of the many member benefits. We are going to the Small Mammal House for an up close meet and greet with some of the residents there. All right, so please come join us and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to follow our adventures here in Washington, D.C. as well as in where else? Disney World! Disney World! All right, everybody, I, before we go and see the animals, I'm coming to you actually from our car after our visit to the zoo because I thought of a few tips that might help those of you who are going to be coming out to the zoo and to Washington, D.C. First of all, I recommend coming first thing in the morning when the zoo opens. Uh, barely any crowds and like when it got to about noon the zoo was packed especially there's a lot of field trips going on in late spring and through the summer so come early in the morning the weather's a lot cooler especially if you're not used to the heat and the humidity that we get here in Virginia I mean you're, you're pretty much melting it's about 95 degrees today it's uh, we're, we're gross right now this kid needs a bath uh, so come early in the morning for for to, to beat that heat, beat the crowds, and then also uh, that's when the critters are awake and you want to see them awake. I don't know about you, but I've got three sleeping cats that I can see in the comfort of my own home. So, you know, you don't want to see the animals asleep. You want to see them awake. So make sure you come early in the morning. Lastly, uh, if you can, especially if you're a tourist and you're not used to this area, especially you're not used to city drive, I highly recommend taking public transportation. There's a couple of metro stops not far from the zoo. Uh, if you do have to drive, once again, head early in the morning when most people aren't out on the road. Because I kid you not, no rules apply here in D.C. in the suburbs. Think Mad Max. I, I kid you not, I've been almost ran off the road. So if you can, take public transportation. But if you do have to drive, head out early in the morning when you, there's not so many drivers out and it's a bit safer, especially if you're going to be glued to your GPS. And just know that if you are going to be parking at the zoo, it's about $25 to park now. You can reserve some parking ahead of time, but if you come early in the morning, there's plenty of parking. We got there a little bit before 8 a.m. and we had no problem getting a spot. All right, we'll let you see the animals now. What is he, little man? I don't remember. What is he? He's got that armor. He starts with an A. Are you guys familiar with Golden Lion Tamers? He's an armadillo. Oh, well, that's this right. Is, this I forget the name. Do you remember? We talked about this one yesterday. It's a cat. It's the, this is a sand cat. Uh, I wish it was so that's a greater mouse deer. Does it look like a deer to me? It doesn't look like no. a deer to you. Yes. Let me explain. It looks like a mouse. Well, that might be, it looks a little bit like a deer and a little bit like a mouse, so maybe that's how it got its name. Um, babies will hang out with their moms for a good while. I want to say at least a couple of years. Um, like I said, we don't, haven't had babies here uh, in a very long time, but up at uh, the National Aquarium of Baltimore, they are cranking out babies a lot, actually. So they sloth tend to- babies? Sloth babies, yeah. So their sloth, uh, her name's Ivy, um, has babies on a pretty regular basis, actually. I want to say they've had at least four in the past three or five years, something like that. Um, and then, so the babies will hang on to mom for at least a while. And then usually the they'll start breeding again while baby is still attached. To be honest, um, we're getting a bunch more mole rats too, so we'll have these old guys and new guys. But they're gonna have a whole tall exhibit to look at all the mole rats, and it's gonna have some fancy features like uh, they all have the RFD tags. Um, you can so you can see through it because these guys have no subcutaneous fat. If you live in an environment that's always the same temperature, millions of years, once again, you don't need fat to stay warm, so it goes away. So when you're looking at these guys, you're looking straight through their body into their organs. You see in the viscera, but you can also see their RFD tag. Oh, yeah. So our new exhibit is going to have a reader, so you can see how many times and where they're spending their time. Which, in order to get that, you're going to have to sit in front of the exhibit for a long time. So I expect to see all you guys there <laughs> watching to see where these mole rats are going. Um, but that'll be fun. Hi everyone. So we 
with me I have Julian. He is our 18-year-old three-banded armadillo. And he wants very much to get down and run around. <laughs> so if you guys look at the back of his carapace, he's got these three bands right here. That is essentially where he gets his name from being a three-banded armadillo. It's also the only points of flexibility on his body. So by having this very large carapace and very hard carapace, he cannot move around too well. So he can only bend right about here, which means he is awful at climbing. The only way these guys can really defend themselves is by curling up into a ball, and these are the only species of armadillo that can curl all the way into a ball. So if Julian wanted to disappear entirely, all you <laughs> like, I just want belly rubs, yeah. All you have to see, that's fine, you don't have to do it. We'll try again later. So Julian is the exception to many armadillos. He really likes belly rubs. Most armadillos do not like belly rubs. If most armadillos get touched on their guard hairs, they will snap shut really fast. And I speak from experience, nothing hurts worse than getting your fingers stuck in an armadillo. <laughs> Burning question you guys might have, is that what I think it is? Yes, that is the part that lets us know Julian is a boy. And proportionally to his size, armadillos have one of the largest penises compared in the animal kingdom to their body size. That is so they can get around the female and get inside her to make babies. Yeah. And they run kind of like a prima ballerina. And yes, he is urinating everywhere. This tends to happen. Fret not everyone. I have the devices to clean it up. <laughs> no. I love this. These are dwarf mongoose. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's probably the queen. The queen? Okay. Yeah, she, they, he said when he did the talk that they get four times larger. Oh, wow. There, it, there are probably two queens then. Yeah, I think they have two separate colonies oh. in here. Oh. But yeah, so that's the queen he was talking about. See how she's much larger? It's not willing to come out. <laughs> don't eat the exhibit. Yeah, like don't eat your friends. <laughs> He's eating dinner. Ow! He swallowed it Did he really? He swallowed the mouse. Yeah. In like one bite. <laughs> They're cute, but would they make good pets? No. They'd be trouble. No. Look, there's what? two birdies. There's a birdie, too. Yeah. Look, let's check that out. Oh, see the monkey right there? Yeah. Oh, look who's over here, little man. I think these are the skunks. I think you're right. And they're sleeping. Why aren't they sleeping? Because they're nocturnal. Because they're nocturnal, that's right. I'm going to give some money to the panda.
What fish moves like a conveyor belt? The giant one. Oh, the giant one. Find a sign that tells us. Uh, he is. Uh, oh, he is a red-tailed catfish. He is a red-tailed catfish. Why do you think he's called a red-tailed catfish? hide in there? Yes. Did we learn that from Finding Nemo? Yes. All right, little man, what's one thing you learned today? A sand cat can swallow a mouse hole. And what did you think of meeting the small mammals? Lovely. The sand cats were the cutest. The sand cats were the cutest. So would you want to get up early and do it again as you're running away from me? All right, and I learned, as he's running away from me, I learned that naked mole rats, basically their society is one continuous episode of Game of Thrones. Basically what we learned, and unfortunately it's not on video, is that when a female challenges the queen to become the next queen, she has to kill that queen. And some of the soldier mole rats will try to defend the current queen. And so he said sometimes they come in and they usually lose about two or three naked mole rats in that. Who would have thought? Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment.